Italian sauce in particular was never supposed to be overdosed with red pepper. That's a little addition from our friends south of the border who man the kitchens. And they're nice people. Don't I'm not saying it to pander. Last night I went to a restaurant to celebrate uh, with Mrs. S. And I brought my own wine. Not that I'm cheap. I mean, I was willing to pay corkage. I just wanted to drink something good. So I brought a bottle of Italian wine I've kept for a long time. The Gaia. It's G-A-J-A. It's very costly, but I never get a hangover from it. Never. It's so dry. You can feel it dry out your tongue, you know, like when you drink it. I mean, you just can't believe how good really dry Italian wine is. It's really great. So, you know, the server was a, a very short, I would suspect, for a guy from Guatemala, whatever. Nicest guy in the world. What do you think? I'm afraid or I'm angry? I'm not. I'm not looking to have uh, Timothy McVeigh serve me. I'm not asking for Timothy McVeigh to serve me everywhere, cook my food. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, I'm just saying, you know, we got to have a rational set of laws in this country. I mean, you want immigration? Well, then decide what kind of immigrants you want. You want them to come here and work or sit on welfare? Well, obviously, you want the former, not the latter. Nobody wants to bring in a leech or a parasite. Except Barack Hussein Obama seems to bring in leeches and parasites. They don't all come here to work. And that's why there's dissension in this country. See, if the immigrants were all working here, do you think there'd be this much dissension? If there were not so many crimes committed by illegals, do you think so many people would be noticing, complaining, and making this a an issue for the presidency? No, my friends, but there is an inordinate amount of crime amongst immigrants, as we know. There's an inordinate amount of welfare recipients amongst immigrants compared to the indigenous native population, my friends. We understand that a good percentage of them work very hard, but what you don't know is that behind the scenes their wife is home with a number of babies and she is not working. And that's a problem because the country is broke. And of course, the only reason they get away with it is because Barry from Honolulu prints the money. You get it? Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I. I want to remind you of, like, the drunk uncle that you love because he had such incredible courage. He had a, he had a good voice, and he couldn't sing. And traveled each and every highway. All right, Uncle Mo, get off the stage. Or <laughs> I'm having a good time. Once a year, we have a party on the air. It's book launch day. I've worked so hard for this day. And by the way, so many of you are so loyal that you go out to buy the book for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know the psychology saying, Mike, I'm buying the book to support you. I love your show. I'll buy the book. That's what you're saying. You're not even going to read it. You don't want to read. It's too much time to read. It's easy to watch a television show. But since I'm banned on television, you won't hear it on television. Uh, well, I could tell you something that I shouldn't say because it hasn't happened yet, but it has something to do with me and television. But let's wait on that one. Let's just wait on that one until it actually happens because you can throw a thing on it, you know, and kill it. Am I still on the air? I just saw my producer throw his hands up on the board. Am I actually communicating? I, I'm no way to know. I think so. Regressive had a few, but then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do and saw it through without exception. I played each other. Oh, yes, there were times. Where is the one I'm a puppet, a poet, a pauper, a prince, a king? That's not my way. What song is that? I've loved, I've laughed and cried. I've had my fails, my share of losing. And now as tears subside, you know who wrote this song? Paul Anka. Paul Anka. By the way, he's of Arabic uh, descent. And he is a Lebanese Syrian Christian. I don't know if you know that. Paul Anka, one of the great musicians of our time, was also a phenomenal uh, lyricist. And he wrote this song. I figured it was some Jewish songwriter who died in a motel room somewhere in Palm Springs because his girlfriend left him. But no, it was Paul Anka. Every time you see one of these great, <laughs> these great songs from the 50s and you look up who the songwriter was, the guy died broke in a dirty hotel room somewhere in Hollywood, right? Or in Palm Springs, you know, when Palm Springs was a dump. You know, I've never been to Palm Springs. I don't know what people go there for. I have no idea they, what they go there for, the palm trees and the heat. I don't get it. Everyone talking about going Palm Springs, Palm Springs, Palm Springs. I don't like heat. I don't like palm trees. But okay, to each his own. But in those days, Palm Springs was not that hot. I mean, Sinatra had a house, but by today's standards, it was nothing. I was big, yeah, but it was like, you know, a mid-century, like, ugly. I'm into architecture. I don't like single-pane sliding doors because it reminds me of uh, movies where the hitman could come in by snapping the lock. And sliding it open. 
I don't even like doors and windows in my houses, to be honest with you. If I could, I'd live in a, a bomb shelter. But then, of course, they would consider me crazy, so I don't live in a bomb shelter. I live in a bomb shelter of my mind, the Savage Nation. Okay, just having a good time, just rapping a little bit to keep you entertained. I'll be back in a minute. If you care to call, the phone number is 855-400-728 to be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. I've been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet, a prawn, and a king. You know, actually, I don't like the word pawn in that. In that, that song, That's Life, I've been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet, a pawn, and a king. I like the word prawn instead of pawn. In fact, the next time I go in an Italian restaurant, I'm going to ask for an order of pra a pawns marinara. And the guy will say prawns, and I'll say, I want, I want, I want pawns marinara. This is quintessential America, is it not? I mean, when you hear Frank Sinatra singing That's Life, what do you think? What do you see? You see a black and white movie, you see Broadway, you see a black, you see a black car going by, you see Frank inside with a perfect suit and a, a fedora. You see uh, his friends, you see the Rat Pack, you see America smiling and laughing, having a drink, having a good time. You see well-dressed women. You don't see what you see today. Today it's, a, it's like a garbage can. Take a look at the country today. Look in the streets. I walk around New York or I walk around San Francisco. Nobody wears any clothing. It's like they're ashamed to wear clothing. Look at Mark Zuckerberg, a guy worth endless billions, goes to China and addresses them in broken Chinese in an undershirt. If he doesn't understand what a schmuck he looks like and what an embarrassment he is for America to do that, I can't help him. But anyway, look, that's one way of looking at things. There are many ways to look at things. It's a huge, huge universe. Everyone has their own perspective. I have mine. You have yours. And hopefully there's a number of us who still think the same way. We come together around the, the motto of borders, language, and culture. Now, before I come back to the very serious part of today's show, which are some of the 40 solutions to save the United States of America from the onslaught of Barry from Honolulu and his sorority, which I have in Government Zero, I want to play a, a wee portion a wee portion of this morning's interview on my local radio station, KSFO, with Brian Sussman and Katie Green. Michael, thanks for being with us this morning. It's a beautiful day, you know, as people say. I, w I wake up and look at the sunrise every day. I watch the birds on the bay. I watch the terns drop from the sky like a, like a rock, pick up a fish. And truthfully, you know, it's the only way to get away from the, <laughs> the insanity of the political world that we're living in. And the double talk, the double speak is overwhelming. Don't you just love how the Democrats care so much for the illegal immigrant? How they go to sleep every night thinking about how they can wash their feet, clothe them and feed them. Now, of course, it was said years ago that the missionaries came to Hawaii to do good and they did very well indeed. Nothing's really changed. Liberals always do good. But Pelosi and Feinstein do very well indeed on this particular issue, don't they? They sure do. Michael, we have come to a point, and you really describe this extremely well in Government Zero. I don't see anybody in Washington, D.C., Republican or Democrat, really willing to address the fact that that border needs to be sealed off. But what say you, Michael? How do we do this? What do we have to do? I don't think it takes a genius to figure out how to secure a border. It takes a, a, a leader who believes in his own country. Near I, need I say that Barry from Honolulu is a man without a country? Need I say that Barry from Honolulu has always, since his hippie mother put it into his head, always seen America as just another piece of the New World Order, just another egg to be broken for the New World Order omelet. The man is a stone Marxist. His mama taught him this on her knee. She hated America. She inculcated him with hatred for America. She told him to dissemble America because it's an evil country. If you study the mastery of this man, and I don't under underestimate how, genius, how brilliant he is, mm -hmm. the man is the most brilliant general the left has ever seen. He is smarter than Karl Marx and Vladimir Le Lenin put together. Look at the revolution he has caused in this country without firing a shot, without lining people up against the wall. Look what he gets away with, and look how he does it. And so, again, don't underestimate who this man is and how powerful he is. And don't underestimate how he owns the media, lock, stock, and barrel. There are only a few voices in opposition right now. Now, you say, well, what's the big problem? I think we have to look to our cousins in Europe to see what's going on. When you see those pictures that came up this week, 
They look like army ants. I'm talking about the so-called migrants coming in from Africa and Syria and God knows where else, literally trampling the wheat fields of Europe. And it's an aerial shot. It looks like army ants raiding the nest of uh, of another, let us say, species. I've never seen anything like this. And the Europeans are powerless, ballless, clueless in protecting their own citizens from these hordes that are invading their nation. As I said last week on my show, and I think it's a very keen insight myself, but a sad one. And I know it's one that's going to alienate many people the minute I start it, but I'll start it in my own inimitable way. While Hitler invaded surrounding nations to impose his insane Nazi view upon them, Merkel, Obama, and the other weaklings of the West are invading their own nations, literally invading their own nations with foreign armies of people who largely do not contribute to society. This is a big lie. They all come here to work. So let's look at that for a minute. The liberal Mm -hmm. mantra is they all come here to work. We're all children of immigrants, and I am an immigrant son myself. But let's look at that for a moment. Barry from Honolulu brought in several hundred thousand mainly young women and babies last summer or the summer before by the train load. Remember them coming in from Honduras? Absolutely. El Salvador, yep. Guatemala? Yep. Do you know of any infants working in America from Guatemala? <laughs> of course they're not working. Are their mothers working? Of course they're not working. They're home taking care of the baby. So right. who's supporting them? Baptist Family Services, Lutheran Family Services, Catholic Charities, you name it, all of the, quote, religious groups Mm -hmm. and their front businesses, which they cleverly set up as non-profit 501c3s, have made billions of dollars a year housing, feeding, caring, medicating, educating these hordes that Barry dumped on the United States of America. They're not working. They didn't come here to work. So what did he bring them in for? What did he bring those women and children into this country for? They weren't facing him in danger in their own country. They came here for a better life. That's wonderful. My grandfather came here for a better life, and he worked his heart out and died at 47 of a heart attack. So far as I know, these people are not working their hearts out. They're enjoying the luxuries that I pointed out in Government Zero. Flat screen televisions, a yoga classes, you name it. They're getting a gold-plated treatment while most Americans who are poor are treated like garbage by this government. So you talk about government zero. Who, who is this government representing? All the special interests that are feasting off the illegal immigrant hordes. Now remember, there's fortunes being made on this. This is something oh, yeah. people don't understand. They say, well, we know that criminal gangs are behind smuggling in Europe. We, we've heard about that, right? Where they charge these poor people money to bring them across borders. What we don't understand is that in our own country, there are gangs called social service organizations. There are organized gangs that are making billions of dollars by so-called servicing these hordes of illegal aliens. So this is just a thumbnail sketch of the corruption involved with this whole issue of immigration. Let's put aside the crime, the disease, the social disorder being caused by this. Let's just look at the dollars being stolen by corrupt politicians their families and their cronies. You talk about corruption, I think I've just spelled it out on a minor scale. Savage. All in government zero under zero immigration. Now the news. Let's look at the news. News is Paul Ryan slams budget deal, not the way to do people's business. That's called a shock and a jive. He's bashing outgoing John Boehner and the Senate leaders in the White House for their backroom budget deal, saying the process stinks. That's called a sham. He was in on it. That's number one. He's making believe he's the outsider now who's angry at the establishment. That's to placate we the people into thinking he actually represents us as the Speaker of the House. Next story. CBS poll shock. Carson takes national lead over Trump. Well, the day you believe in a CBS poll, uh, get back to me because I have, uh, well, I have a number of things I could sell you that I can't mention on the air. CBS poll? That's an oxymoron. What do you mean CBS poll? Three guys in the back room on marijuana. That's a CBS poll. Carson takes lead. Now, why would CBS want you to believe that Carson is beating Trump? Because they don't want Trump to run against Hillary. They know that Trump's liable to trounce her. Carson's going to lose. Carson never ran uh, anything, never ran anything. 
What, we want another inexperienced individual running the country? We didn't have enough with Obama now for seven years? We need Carson like we